and waiting for it to record. Okay, we're recording. Cool. Sweet. So, one more video I needed to record that I forgot I had to make. So, anyway, because we are not in class this semester, this is another group activity that I'm going to switch around into a individual activity. So let's go to draw.io. This was normally just a lecture. And once this loads, you'll see that it is a flow chart maker. And I'm just gonna save it to a device because I don't really care about this right now because I'm not saving this anyway. Create new diagram, there we go. So I'm just going to go and just, we can name it whatever. I'm just gonna go with a blank diagram here. Once again, this is draw.io. So what we're going to do is we are going to take basically a game, just something simple, something that everyone has played before, something that everyone has played, everyone's seen, everyone knows the rules to, and we're going to break it down like it's a computer game instead. Because things that are so simple for us to understand are actually very complex, ta uh, complex tasks. If you think about it, a computer only understands yes or no, true or false, on or off. Hopefully I have drilled that into your skulls at this point in these videos. But, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a game from start to finish using only yes or no answers. And when we get to that, when we get to that sort of process, remember how I was talking about SDLC, and there should be a bunch of links to SDLC stuff around, you're going to have to take a look at that. Now what is SDLC? SDLC is System Development Life Cycles. They are the processes in which we make stuff. So, I also mentioned that a little bit in the, uh, in the uh, Six Thinking Hats video. Matter of fact, I'll probably have to make a SDLC video itself as well. So let's just get started here. We have over here on this left-hand side, we have our icons. Over here, we have stuff that we got, and then in the middle is where we put stuff. So if we just simply put an ellipse in there, now I have an ellipse there. If I double-click it, I can type something in. So I can make this my start point, and I can shrink it, and I can make it green and I can click and drag it and move it all around. Now obviously if I go off a page, it will then just make a new page. So don't worry about getting too confusing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a flow chart. We wanna be able to make a point from point A to point B to point C to D to E. We're gonna go through all the logic and all the branching of a simple childhood game from start to finish. So, I'm going to double click here and I'm just gonna click text. So I'm gonna say that this game is tic-tac-toe, okay? And for the sake of being it, I'm just gonna go and say, you are much larger font there so that we can just see that this is in fact tic-tac-toe. This is a tic-tac-toe flow chart. And there's our start. And down over, let's just say the bottom right, the closest thing to a stop sign, I'm going to say this is end. Okay? So we're going to get from there to there in a bunch of steps. So, what is the very first thing that you have to do in tic-tac-toe? Hmm? Anyone? I know no one's answering, but... First thing is, you gotta draw the board. So I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna make this gray, I guess. I'm gonna say we gotta draw board. Okay? That's the very first thing we gotta do. We gotta draw the board, right? So now, the way this program works is, if you see as I highlight over some things, I get, uh, I get these little circles that appear over these X's. I can just click and drag, and it will make an arrow. So I can click and drag and it'll make an arrow. Now when I move things, the arrow still stays connected. That's what you can do. So, good word of advice is start thinking of all the ways that can happen. What 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 is the end results can be? Well, you can either win, X's can win, O's can win, or you can draw, right? So we know that those are gonna be our three outcomes. So tell you what, why not? We keep doing that, boom, boom. And we're just going to put those over on the side here, so we know that draw, we'll, 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 we'll print draw. 
we'll print that O wins. And at some point in time, we're gonna also print X wins. And you know what, since I'm using these gray shapes, I might as well start making myself a legend here so that we understand what everything means. So why not, I just go and say that this right here, and I'll just make that gray, and I'll double click text. This is what we're gonna say is a computer output, okay? So I got myself a legend, okay? And while I'm at it, let me go and say, well, obviously that's start and that's end, but let me also decide something here. Let's go with the rounded rectangles. And let's just say the rounded rectangles are orange, okay? And this is gonna be a player input. Let's just, let's just give them a nice key legend, okay? We want people to understand what they're looking at. They don't want to question, wait, is this the computer doing something? Is this the player doing something? And then at this point, we're going to say that this is a logic, this is a, uh, this is a choice, okay? This is a choice. This is a logic branch, okay? And outside of, you know, the start and the end, which is also what we're going to be needing. So now we have, we know that we need to draw the board. Somehow we're going to get to printing O's, printing X, print X wins, print O wins, and, or print a draw. So, but we also have these things called choices. I highly, highly recommend that people go in and they look at choices. Because what type of choices you have determines how a game is going to be. And so, what are the possible things we can do? Uh, we can, we can, you know, select, a, we can select a square, but what are the questions? How do we win? How do we lose? So, you know, obviously you win by getting three in a row. Are there three in a row? Yes or no? That only has two possible answers, yes or no. At the same time, you know, are all nine squares filled? That can only be a yes or a no. Because obviously, if all nine squares are filled and no one wins, you get a draw, right? So, we've got that. But you know what, at the same time, we might we might have to make a few more questions while we're in there, but always think about how it is you're going to design stuff. So now with this, we can kind of start building things together. But before we do that, I just want to go over here and show you guys good flowchart design. Okay? I'm just going to Google this, wait for Google to load, whenever Google feels like it. So, a good flow chart, if you look at like a picture like this or whatever, you see how it kind of, it's very easy to read. It's like this arrow goes here, goes here, goes here, goes here. This one can either go here or here. Then it goes down, they all meet here. Then eventually this one comes back around like this. And then eventually it goes to the end. It's kind of easy to see. Same with this one. We either have this path and this path. It goes here, it goes here. This one can split. Either yes or no, goes there, goes there, boom, 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 either yes or no, and either way they go right back there, it's just an extra step for if there's a no, and then we go to the end. So, easy to read, easy to follow the eye, you're not looking at any cross paths, even some confusing stuff will eventually, you know, okay, it's all single lines. So now, let's take a look at some bad flowchart designs. What is this gibberish right here? Where does this guy start? Where does it end? What do all these little lines mean? They're overlapping each other. I can't even follow where some of the lines go. Like, hold up, there's like a cluster of like six of them right there, that red line's so thick. What's going on here? I don't understand. So, we don't want to be this hodgepodge, oh my god, what is this? We don't want that. We want... We, yeah, we don't want this, whatever this is with all the lines going everywhere. <laughs> so, let's be nice, let's have some rules here. I don't want any lines crossing over. I don't want, you know, any, I don't want any choices that are, that cannot be broken down into two paths. If there's three exits, how are you doing that? You either yes, no, or... Yeah, there's no possible way that there's a third answer. It's either yes or no. 
So, now then, we've drawn the board. Now what does the player have to do? Obviously, we have to, you know, we have a question. Whose turn is it? Who goes first? So, tell you what, let's go and copy and paste this. Let's make another question. So, I'm just going to say, that, is this X's turn? Is this X's turn? That's the very next thing we have to worry about. And just to be consistent, I'm making sure we're going straight down. Boop. Is this X's turn? Yes or no? So, if yes, what do we do? Okay. Obviously, uh... Well, you know what? Actually, let me... And see, this is where you can select things and delete them. So, let's, let's actually have the player select something first. We're going to assume that, you know... Player selects square because I forgot something I forgot something what do you have to do if you play tic-tac-toe and you have an X in the middle of the square can you go and put an O right on the same square no so obviously there's something that happens before we even determine what turn it is we need to determine we need to click and drag and determine is square available is square open? And that now is a yes or a no question. So now we have to go down and say, is it yes or no? What happens if it's not open? So let's just make uh, let's just make no's down, okay? So if no, obviously we go and well, there's gonna be a message of some sort that says, um, print select again so there's gonna be something like that so if no and I'm just gonna double click this object so I can literally put a no on it so that you know that that's a no path so print select object again like print select again and they have to go back and play again so basically if someone were to select a square is it open no go back and select a square again but if it is open then we have ourselves our next question. So here we go. We got ourselves a yes path here. So is it X's turn? Yes or no? Because now obviously that means we do different things. Because if it's an X, we put an X in square. So so if it if it's yes, put X in square. That's how it would wind up working. But obviously. If it's no, if, if it's not X's turn, it must be O's turn. So we'll put an O in square. And then, no matter what happens, at the end of the day, we're going to switch players. Because either they put it in or they put it in. So, yes and no. I'll double click these again. Yes. Double click. No. And... We're going to go and put it in, and then of course, no matter what happens, either way, we've gotten that. It all goes back to switching players. Now obviously, after someone puts something down, now we have ourselves a couple of questions here, because did, did are there three in a row? Are there three in a row? Actually, let's, 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 let's even make this easier. Are there three X's in a row? And we'll also check to see, are there more O's in a row? So now we've got ourselves our chain of logic here. So switch players, it goes down here. Are there three in a row? We're just going to type in, you know, darn it, double click. There we go. Click no, click no, so, but if yes, so if there's three X's in a row, print X, O wins. Print this, O wins. Are all nine squares filled? If yes, then print draw. So you see here, how easy this becomes now to break it down into individual parts. And then, of course, at the end of the day, was all nine squares. So, if we have a yes, 
it would end the game. We obviously have another yes, it would end the game. We would obviously have another yes, and it would end the game. And at the end of the day, no matter which three of these goes, we know that we are, in fact, ending the game at this point. So, whether X wins, O wins, or we draw, the game goes to the end. However, if all nine, if all nine squares are not filled, what happens? Oh, well, gee, I guess we gotta go back up and, you know, player selects the square, right? Boop, boop. So, here's the no path. And if we zoom out here, zoom, whoops, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. There we go. From beginning to end, we have ourselves the logic of how a game of tic-tac-toe will go. Now, realistically, there's eight different possible ways to win tic-tac-toe. Vertical left, vertical middle, vertical right, top uh, across, middle across, bottom across, diagonal left, diagonal right. So there's eight different ways, and we would have to break down eight different yes-no questions for, you know, X's and O's. So in theory, that would be 16 different possible questions. I'm not going to be that strict. But I want you guys, and I'm going to have this up as an example. I'll probably make a few little changes here just for consistency's sake and whatnot. But um, I'll do that off camera. But I want you guys to make so that you're understanding how a computer is deciding things and how it's going through its logic. I want you to go from the start to the end, make a game. A simple game, okay? 21, maybe, you know, Pong, Qbert, Frogger, something that is simple, okay? Or childhood game, kickball, just something that has very few rules. Because as you notice, tic-tac-toe actually has a lot of different steps involved. So I want you guys to just pick a game, obviously not tic-tac-toe, because I used tic-tac-toe in this example, you're not going to copy me. Uh, I want you to come up with your own game and just put it in here. And then when you're done, when you're done, you can go file, you can save this, but you can also, also export as a PNG or a JPEG or a PDF. Export it as an image file, okay? Now, obviously, with all these lines, you can move them around however it is you want. Stuff like this. You see these little points? They can move like that. But I want you to s save and export. Export. Uh, no, 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 where's export? There it goes. Export as, export as one of these image files, okay? PNG is going to be transparent, so this grid background will be transparent. So basically, that might cause some issues. So go with a JPEG or a PDF. And just save those. Save them to your device. Save them wherever it is you need to save them to. And submit that through Moodle as your uh, flowchart. So that's how we're going to go. Oh, and obviously put your name on it and your date. You know, I really shouldn't have to explain things like that. But you'd be surprised. So... Just go and make yourself a flowchart and submit it through Moodle, and that will be the end of this, uh, this lecture. And hopefully, because we are going to be coding a lot, we're going to be doing, you know, some stuff here in a few weeks. I want you to understand how computers understand the processes and how it's going to be. You have to be this literal. You have to be this step by step. Okay? So thank you very much, and you have a great day.